Hey, what's going on YouTube? Alabama Reloader here. Take two <laughs> of this video. Um, hold on two seconds. 0 0.7, 0 0.5. 0 .5. Okay. I had to change my charge weight there and I was trying to remember where it was. Um, so, yeah, so what's this video about? Hold on two seconds. I'm drinking my coffee. Also, by the way, strawberry Pop Tarts with the frosting are the best ever. Pop Tart, just FYI. But pretty much what uh, what we're getting done here, we're loading up from 65 Creed more. I, I want to fire form this uh, these 100 pieces of the Lapua brass that I just picked up um, over at Mr. Big Guns in Huntsville. And so just loading these up. I also picked up, this is the first, that's the first pound of Vitivori powder I've ever owned uh, in my life. So picked up some M555. Matt let me know they got it in, in stock over there. And Mr. Big Guns went by, picked up the brass, picked up some powder. Um, and now I want to do some testing with it. They have load data for the 143 ELDX. Uh, this stuff is an extruded powder, by the way. Uh, kind of a little bit on the shorter side in terms of the cut. Um, then the max charge on their and their reloading manual is 41.7 grains, I believe it is. Um, and it's, and the overall lengths they go with in their manual is kind of interesting. With the 143, they go with a 2.7 inch overall length. Um, right now, this one's sitting at 2.875. So remember, if you'll remember the, the rounds we loaded up and then shot over here, you know, where it's, one of the literally one of the best groups best five shot groups i've ever shot in my life uh, that was with h4350 but the problem was we loaded it at 2.9 okay well because i'm a, a, a da and didn't even think about it 2.9 i can't put it in the magazine so i was having to single feed i had to single feed both of these groups um yeah, i don't know why i didn't think about it i just for whatever reason it slipped my mind when i was loading them up um but Today, we're gonna to load these at 2.85. I just, I've gotta make an adjustment on my seating die. Um, so we gotta come down about 25 thousandths and we're gonna leave them at 2.850. So it's just, I find it interesting that, that the load data specifies it to be so short, in my opinion, because I mean, this thing, this, this projectile, I mean, it hits the lands it's after 2.9 in my Savage 110 Tactical. It, it's hitting the lands after 2.9 inches. So, I mean, we were almost in the lands when I loaded the, the last rounds up. So, I mean, holy smokes, 200 thousandths of, you know, over 200 thousandths of jump to the lands if I'm loading per, you know, Vitavori's manual. So, I, I just thought that was a little odd. Um, I didn't want to load that short, so we're just going to stretch them out 2.850, call it done. Um, mostly because that's what I have loaded these these guys, yeah, right here. These were all loaded 2.850, so and they shot pretty well uh, with H4350. But So that's just kind of what we're doing now currently, but the main topic of this uh, video, and this is the second time I've made this video, um, my brother just called me, kind of interrupted the, the last video, but, um, which sucks when you're, you know, 10 minutes into making a video and then you get interrupted. That's the downside of doing it on your phone. Um, but what's really cool in the reloading world right now, I don't know if you guys saw it, if you even care, uh, but Hornady just released a new cartridge, six millimeter arc, advanced rifle cartridge, I believe is what it's called, six millimeter, 243 diameter. So pretty awesome, and it is intended to be used in an AR-15 platform. That's the other thing that's really cool. Uh, before they released that, you had to, I mean, you could, I'm sure you could wildcat something, but before that, if you wanted to just sort of a standard uh, commercially available uh, 243 diameter projectile and shoot it out of an AR-10 or an AR platform. It had to be an AR-10 platform, uh, which generally is a little bit heavier, um, just not 
not as um, ideal as the AR-15 it would set up would be in my opinion. So uh, apparently some type of you know shadowy DOD alphabet soup letter agency entity thing uh, reached out to Hornady. They said, hey, we're you know we're needing a new you know, we, we kind of need to get in the 21st century here. Let's get upgraded in our weapon, uh, our weapons options and, and selection. And we're looking at, you know, 223. And, well, that just doesn't have the downrange energy that we're looking for, you know, terminal uh, ballistics and performance downrange. We need something better than 223. Uh, but we don't want something like a 308 because then – it's it's heavy again we're back to an ar-10 platform the ammo is heavier uh, the recoil is heavier all of that so that i think they circle back go and watch the video hornady put out it's pretty neat um how they kind of walk through it a little bit and i believe they started looking at the 6.5 grendel which is what this case is and realized that you know that wasn't necessarily going to get the performance they needed either um simply by going with lighter weight bullets in the Grendel to try to get the, the velocity they were looking for. I, I believe they probably quickly realized that wasn't going to perform or wasn't going to provide the terminal um, performance that this agency was looking for. So essentially what it looks like they did uh, on the outside looking in is simply neck down. There might be a few modifications made, but it looks like they necked down a 6.5 Grendel case to accept six millimeter projectiles. That's what it kind of looks like. Uh, because if you go if you go and look, um, you know, various places selling this stuff, it just was released yesterday, but a lot of places were obviously sitting on go, ready to sell some product like Brown Elves. Uh, the magazines are exactly the same as 6.5 Grendel. So it says 6.5 Grendel or six millimeter arc magazine. Uh, so they're interchangeable there. Uh, the bolt, that is used is the exact same as a 6.5 Grendel bolt. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's you know, you're just swapping out the barrel. Uh, the two barrels that I saw on Brown L's, I think Faxon makes a barrel and a, uh, a was it advanced ballistics or whatever ballistic advantage. That's what it is. Ballistic advantage. They make a barrel. Um, it was interesting though. The Faxon barrels were one in eight twist. The ballistic advantage barrels were one in seven. So, that's a little bit interesting there. Um, but yeah, I think it, I think it's a pretty exciting, I think it's going to be a pretty exciting round. If you go and look at, uh, we'll just, let me drop this last powder charge here and take a break. And I'll show you what I'm, what I'm, what I mean by that. Um, the, the six, five Grendel in the AR platform, I think that's awesome. I think the six, five performs really well, um, for its intended use, you know, as a, is a hunting, you know, setup deer, hog. I, I think it does great. It's an amazing round. Um, you know, you can load anywhere from like 90 grain spear varmint bullets up to, you know, I've seen load data as heavy as like 156 grain. Um, in the in the Vitivori manual, I think there's like 156 grain Lapua round nose bullet, similar to the Hornady 160 grain round nose that Lapua makes one as well. And I think they have load data for the for the Grendel all the way up to that weight. So now, of course, it's traveling fairly slow, but still, it, so that's a wide range of, of bullet weights that it can handle in an AR-15 platform, which is really cool. Um, but the I think where they're going with that terminal performance. So this this is not even you know draw your own conclusions from this, but we're simply looking at 243 Winchester. This is the Hornady. Uh, 10th edition, but they don't have the six millimeter Creedmoor data in here. Um, but they do have the Grendel, and then what we're going to be looking at is 243 Winchester. So again, not not exactly a good comparison. But this bullet right here, that was one of my favorites when I'm you know loading up the six millimeter Creedmoor is the 108 ELD match. So we're going to kind of stick with this bullet as a test case because I would imagine. You know, that's what, as soon as the six millimeter arc, people start loading it up, they're going to be looking at, you know, the heavy, the heaviest of the, of the six millimeter offerings, which I believe goes up to 115, I think is what you can purchase. 
Um, I believe that's one of the heaviest I've seen in a six millimeter is 115 grain projectile. But the 108s, you're gonna see 103, 108s, 110s, um, 105s, those type of projectiles. So what's cool about it is, you know, obviously this is you can't really compare the velocities here, but you're gonna you're gonna be achieving pretty good velocities. And what's nice is, you know, you look at that 108. Look at the sectional density, 261. All right, so the diameter is going to be 243 on the six millimeter projectile. So if you go and grab a bunch of these 108s to load up in your six millimeter arc, um, you know, you're, you've got a really good sectional density of 261 um, that you're going to be sending down range coming out of your AR, uh, your AR-15 platform. Now, keep that in mind. So that's a that's one of my favorite six millimeter bullets. All right, so 261 on the sectional density. All right. So if you look at, now if you come over here to the Grendel, so they've got low data, the, let's see, yeah, the lowest uh, grain weight that they have is 95 grain, but they've got a couple of 100 grain offerings here. So if you just went with the 100 grain, you know, your sectional density, now you're, you're dropping, you're giving up a ton of sectional density in terms of penetration ability. Um, how well something's going to penetrate. You're giving up quite a bit of sectional density by switching to the Grendel. So you can't necessarily just say, hey, shoot lighter weight bullets, you know, out of the Grendel as your solution for, you know, higher velocity, longer range capability because you're giving up that ability to actually penetrate once you're on target. Um, so I think that's where maybe the Grendel might have possibly failed in that respect. Uh, they maybe could have achieved the velocity, but just the, the overall terminal performance capability just wasn't there, I guess. Um, and same thing, remember in the, in the 243 diameter or the six millimeter diameter, your sectional density was 261. I mean, that's still better than what your standard weight for the Grendel projectile. You know, a lot of people shoot around the 120, 123 class projectile for the Grendel. Well, it's that 108, grain you know has a better sectional density than even what your standard sort of weight class is and when you're when you're talking the 120 grain well now your velocities are starting to drop you know in terms of what you, what's actually achievable um in the grendel so i think that's probably why the grendel fell a little short um you know the recoil is extremely manageable out of the grendel so it definitely wouldn't have fallen short there but i think just the being able to achieve the velocities that they were looking for and that downrange sort of terminal performance, being able to penetrate once you're on target. Um, I think that was something that was specifically called out was the ability to uh, penetrate barriers, take that for what it's worth. Um, so I think that's what kind of led them down the road of, of looking at necking that down and, and going with a six millimeter projectile. So improved sectional density over the uh, Grendel in terms of some, you know, similar bullet weight type setup. So yeah, it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be an exciting round. I'm definitely looking forward to getting one at some point in time. I thought about possibly just doing a barrel swap on my Grendel now, um, since everything is, uh, everything else is virtually the same bolt. Uh, you know, it's, it accepts, a, it uses a 6.5 Grendel bolt and the mags and everything are the same. So I thought about possibly just buying a new barrel and doing a swap, but you know, I'm, I may go the route that my brother is gonna go. I believe he, I, I asked him about it. I think he said he's just gonna build, you know, another, he's gonna build a six millimeter uh, because he likes his Grendel so much. And I'm kind of in the same boat. I mean, I really enjoy shooting the Grendel. It's a great uh, deer rifle, you know, me and, uh, fiance now she'll be my wife and a couple well technically she is my wife we're now legally married uh but the ceremony's coming up this weekend so but uh it we both were able to take a deer with it this week this this hunting season so it's, it's an awesome setup awesome rifle i've got some good loads developed for it uh, so i may just go down the route of looking at building a completely new uh, setup for the six millimeter arc so that's pretty cool. It's, it's a really cool round. Um, you know, do we actually need it 
does the gun community actually need it? No, <laughs> probably not. Um, is it neat? Yes, most definitely. Uh, the concept behind it and everything and, and the performance that I think you'll be able to, to achieve, that's pretty cool uh, in an AR-15 platform. So that's going to be pretty sweet. Um, the barrel options that I've seen for it so far, I think go from a 14 point, you know, 14 and a half inch up to 24 inch, you know, different barrels. I think like 14 and a half, 16, 18, 20, 22 and 24, I believe are the length barrels that I've seen. Um, I'm gonna have to do some thinking on that. I don't know what barrel option I would go with. Um, because if you, if you go with, a shorter barrel you know if you if you stick with something like a 16 inch well now you're not necessarily able to take advantage of that increased velocity uh, for the down you know sort of downrange performance which is why it was designed in the first place so um, so I don't know I don't know about that now of course that's when maneuverability comes into play you know the 16 inch barrel and the 14 and a half inch you know that's where those uh, come into play and, and better in terms of maneuverability and everything. So I don't know, I was thinking a 20 inch might be a happy medium, uh, a good uh, sort of middle of the road barrel length. Uh, the 24, you know, if I went with something like a 24 inch barrel, um, I don't know, I just, I don't know. We'll see, but yeah, really cool round. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, what are your thoughts on it? You know, do you think it's just another unnecessary specialized cartridge, you know, that won't really go anywhere, you know, probably won't gain much traction? Uh, I mean, wh what do you think? I, this is another, in my opinion, just I haven't reloaded for it yet or haven't shot it, haven't done anything with it. But, I mean, Hornady, it just seems like they continue to knock it out of the park with sort of these um, enhanced or improved cartridge designs that they keep coming out with you know, with the six mil, you know, six, five Creed more, however, what, 12 years ago, however long ago it was now, I think 12 years ago, and then six millimeter Creed more. And then, you know, just everything that they're kind of pumping out six millimeter arc. Um, it's just, it's, it seems like they, they go above and beyond some of these other competitors, uh, bullet manufacturers, ammunition manufacturers. It seems like they're just in the forefront with, some of these developments and cartridges and things. So I don't know. They, they definitely seem to be on it in terms of marketing and, and, uh, brand awareness and, and driving sales for sure. So, and creating buzz. I mean, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. What do you guys think? Are you going to buy one? Are you going to build one? Um, I don't know. I'm thinking about doing it. I think I'm definitely going to do it eventually, not tomorrow, but <laughs> definitely eventually. So, that's it. That's my thoughts on it. Um, let me know what you think down below, and then uh, we'll catch y'all next time. Y'all have a good one.